Welcome to this video which is suitable for OCR A-level chemists and in this video we're going to look at how to make a standard solution and before I go any further I'm going to talk about what is meant by the term standard solution and a standard solution is just the fancy word that is given to a, a solution where we know the concentration we are absolutely sure we've got an exact concentration of that substance. So, we might be asked in an exam to describe how to make up a solution of 0.1 molar or 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide. And in this question we're only asked to make 250 centimeter cubed of that standard solution. Uh, now, you could be given any substance, really, um, to make a solution of. Um, they might put a few twists in, um, but this would be perhaps a nice five mark question. Um, and in this, there'd be two marks probably for the calculation, because we're going to need to know how much sodium hydroxide, in other words, the mass of sodium hydroxide that we're going to use. There'd be two marks for that calculation, and then there'd be three marks for describing the practical process that we're going to use. So I'll whip through the mole calculation to start with, which should be an easy two marks, and then I'll go through the practical process that we need to use. Uh, so, let's get cracking. Um, first of all, we need to know the moles of sodium hydroxide that are going to be required in a 250 centimetre cubed solution. So, if moles is concentration times volume, our concentration is 0.1, our volume is 250, um, but we've got to convert that into decimeter cubed. And if I type that into my calculator, I get 0.025. So those are the moles of sodium hydroxide required. Now, sodium hydroxide is a white solid, um, so I need to convert that moles number into mass. So if moles equals mass over formula mass, uh, we can rearrange that to give mass equals moles times nr. Uh, we know our moles is 0 0.025. We then have to calculate the mr of sodium hydroxide, so we need our periodic tables out. Uh, so the mass or the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23. Our relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. And our relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. Now obviously when it's written out like this, and I'm just doing this in my head, I'm assuming that you're able to give me the formula of sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH. And if we put that into a calculator, um, it actually comes out as, let's say, one gram. So we need exactly one gram of sodium hydroxide in a solution which has a volume of 250 centimetre cubed. And if you did that bit correctly, and I'm assuming that I've not made any mistakes here, that would be worth two of the five marks. So let's get on with the practical process. Right, now I've pilfered these diagrams off the internet. Uh, so uh, many thanks to whoever had these diagrams and if there's any copyright infringement please let me know. So the first stage unsurprisingly is to weigh out our sodium hydroxide. Now we need to make sure that we have exactly one gram of NaOH in our weighing boat because we want a solution of exactly what we were asked for. Okay, There's no margin for error. So we need to make sure there is exactly one gram of that NaOH in that weighing boat. And we're then going to tip that into a beaker. So transfer one gram NaOH into beaker. 
And what are we going to do with it in a beaker? Well, we're going to dissolve it. So, and dissolve in, well, we, we need to decide how much water we're going to dissolve it into. Let's say maybe 50 centimeter cubed of water. So here's our beaker, and here you can see is our glass rod, and we're tipping up, tipping some water into there, making it up to roughly 50 centimeter cubed, stirring it round, and making sure our sodium hydroxide fully dissolves. Now, we need to make sure that all the solid which was in that weighing boat has got into that beaker. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bottle of distilled water and we're going to wash the weighing boat repeatedly, maybe two or three times, to make sure that all the sodium hydroxide ends up in that beaker. We're going to stir it and make sure it all dissolves. We're then going to take our beaker and we're going to transfer the liquid through a funnel into a volumetric flask. And when you're answering exam questions on this, you must talk about the apparatus required. So we're going to use a 250 centimetre cubed volumetric flask. Now I'm not going to write down everything I say which is important for an exam question. So it's important that you heed um, what is being said. But you need to note down the apparatus name. This is a volumetric flask, and we're going to tip the liquid from this beaker into our volumetric flask. Now we need to make sure that all the solution, which might there might be residue on the inside of the beaker, there might also be residue on the stirring rod. There would then be residue on the funnel at the top of the volumetric flask. Okay, That's a problem if it's not been transferred into the volumetric flask. So we're going to wash okay, we're going to wash the beaker, the rod and the funnel with distilled water. And it's important you say it's with distilled water. Earlier we washed the weighing boat, I didn't write that down, and now we're washing the beaker, we're washing the funnel, and we're washing the glass rod to make sure there's no residue solution on there. And you can see here, one of the reasons I like this diagram is you can see that the volume of the liquid still isn't up to the line on the volumetric flask. We still don't have 250 centimetre cubed of liquid in that volumetric flask. If I've got too much in there, we've got a problem, we have to start again. So what we're going to do is to get the liquid from that level up to the line, we're going to use a dropping pipette or a pasta pipette. Um, so let's see, uh, that's a terrible drawing. Uh, are we going to be able to erase that? Ooh, yes, I am. Uh, let's see if I can do any better. The second time, Ooh, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to add distilled water from a dropping pipette. Drop, a drop, a drop. Okay, until the level of the water reaches, or the level of the solution, shall I say, reaches the line. And you're going to get, you have to get your eye line right down with the line on the volumetric flask, and the bottom of the meniscus should touch the line on the volumetric flask. So, don't forget to do your washings. Don't forget to then top it up dropwise from a dropping pipette or a pasta pipette until the meniscus touches the bottom of the line, or the bottom of the meniscus touches the line. And you think at that point, brilliant, I'm pretty much done. And when I was answering an exam question on this, I forgot to do the final thing. You must, you must, you must, at that final point, you must shake. Okay, or at least invert the volumetric flask several times. Okay, so measure your mass of sodium hydroxide, one gram exactly, transfer that into a beaker, wash the weighing boat, dissolve it in about 50 centimetre cubed of water. Wash the weighing boat, then tip 
the liquid from the beaker through a funnel into a volumetric flask, rinse the beaker, rinse the um, glass rod, obviously through the funnel, then rinse the funnel, and then for your final topping up of the liquid line in there, use a pasta pipette, stop of the volumetric flask, and shake. And that should be how to prepare a standard solution. I hope that's proved useful. Now go and see if you can learn that process and regurgitate that information okay, without any prompting.